jobs and, and that's how that's how I sort of progressed in the military and what I found was the because I wasn't the most intelligent person I could physically get myself to where I needed to be in the military so the more fit you became and I used my fitness as a tool to I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed but you know get, <laughs> to get my rank to get my rank and and to sort of um I just I just loved I loved the the life just traveling around the world and causing trouble and the structure is, is important yes. too. That's one of the things that I love about it is there's a structure and everybody yeah. tries within reason to, to follow the structure. But in the American military, like in the army, there's a rule for everything. There's a regulation yeah. how to tie your boots and how to wear you. Yes. Like literally. No, it's literally, it's literally written down mm -hmm. somewhere for everything that is done. Yeah. That's one of the things I, I used to, I miss a lot about about it and the camaraderie. It was the, it was the, the someone rang me the other day and they were asking they're writing a book about film producing and they asked me as a director and a writer and a director because um, I wrote and directed Penitent. They said, you know, how did you put together Penitent? And the reason I put it together in the way I did was using everything I was taught in the military to um, to um, organize people. And to be the leader of that, and, and the leadership skills that I learned in it was so. When I said I was going to make the film, to keep that vision for seven years, because when you're making a film with no budget and no money, and telling everyone, "Yeah, we're going to make this, and it's going to it's going to work," mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you've got people coming in, people leaving, people not believing in your vision, people trying to actually destroy your vision, which is one of the hardest things, and then not becoming violent towards them because they <laughs> because they're about to destroy your dream. You know, it was it was literally emotion. To make penitent was an emotional roller coaster in itself. You didn't had... beat them up, really? <laughs> no, no, no. But there was times that it was people I could have, yeah, neck okay. stretched them and pulled their head off, but I didn't. Yeah, uh, it just it just seems like out of character for you not to beat somebody up. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's been the hardest journey is to is to, to, to transfer because I've, I've also been a therapist for 12 years and I had to do a lot of therapy on myself and learn about looking inward and that was also part of the journey was to look inward mm -hmm. and because I was diagnosed with PTSD in 2007 I realized oh, I, and I and I realized that I had serious problems that that going through the film making the film was a cathartic process for me dealing with oh, all these situations okay. and deal, managing people without using violence and to use negotiations and to also reflect inside and realize that 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 was part of the journey you know and actually yeah. also that what came out of the end of making penitent was a team of of um of artists that helped me finish the film which right. i can now go forward with and use the same team again because we all <laughs> and work and collaborating because you know as a director, all I see yourself as you are literally, you are the the conductor of a, a very, you know, of an orchestra. And if you've got a good orchestra, yeah. then you can conduct that to get the, the perfect music at the end. And also letting go of your own ego, because I might have a vision of how I want to make this film, but the editor's going to have his vision. The the, the sound designer's going to have his vision. The mm. cinematographer's definitely going to have his own vision. And then allowing them to have the creative freedom to to finish what we've got, which is penitent. And I'm, I'm really proud of it, you know? Yeah. Well, it's good that you went through therapy. I'm still in the drinking part of therapy, so. Yeah. Webster, yeah. do you think that one of the things that the movie also helped with is, like, giving you a purpose? Because that's one of the things that we see a lot of soldiers Definitely. When they come back is like they don't, you know, you wake up every day and like everything is laid out. Mm -hmm. Like you do PT, you do this, you do this. And when you get out, you feel like the, the film has helped like put like a, a mission back uh, on you. It's um, it, it's definitely um, it, it gave me a creative vent because I find if I, I do manual labor work and also I work as a therapist part time as well. So I do like manual labor work. I'm basically a jack of all trades, a master of none. <laughs> 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 I just do everything I got to do to, to, you know, to, to hustle. You're just a hustler, you know, just, just got to keep the pennies coming in and pay the mortgage. And, and, mm -hmm. but that the, the making the films, that's my artwork, you know, that's, I don't know how I'm going to be in the future if I'm dealing with big budgets and then all of a sudden I've got to answer to someone or I've answered to a boss and that's the thing I've got to work out next is 
where do I go next? If we're working with huge amounts of money, <clears throat> does the fun come out of it? Does you know, because I've not done it for I've only ever made two films now with no money, and both of them have been painful. Penitent on the last two years was fun, but the films in the past have been absolute hell to make, you know, because you're just dealing a lot with lots of egos and lots of different um, politics. And also, if you've got no money to pay anybody and you're trying to convince people to come along for the ride, the, the great thing about what happened last year was when we was winning all these awards, like people like Jordan, the editor, Jordan Cottingham, mm -hmm. You know, he's a young art student, and all of a sudden now he's he's won a Cannes World Film Festival for best best uh, editor, or Lee Groves, who's been working in the music industry for years with with David Bowie and um, Janet Jackson and all these uh, like big artists, and all of a sudden takes a punt with us amateurs on this film, and he creates this amazing music score because he wanted to to basically learn about making music scores for films, so he practiced. His, his craft on our film. And now we've got this stunning, amazing music score done by like one of the greatest produce, music producers in the world. Right. So, we, so we got Lee Groves on board who's, <clears throat> but he said working with us was, was just as much fun as working with some of the greats, you know, because he had that creative freedom because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, that's the but fun he, part. But, but Lee was, so, between me, Lee and Jordan at one point, we would like go out shoot some stuff and then this guy called Kyle um we had um Carl Richardson came in he was the cinematographer who took over from John O'Regan John O'Regan was like uh he was you know he teaches cinematography at the university and he was amazing but his shoulder gave way and it was suddenly didn't have a cinematographer Carl came in and between what we were shooting and then what Jordan was editing and then we would send it to America where Lee Groves was editing it in Boston and then wow. he would send it back to us and we were like crafting the film and it was just such a beautiful process I was like oh god if it could just stay like this we'll go out shoot the stuff come back Jordan edits it then we send it to Lee Lee puts the, the score on it and in the end it was like it was just that was the most joyous part of making Penitent was putting it together and do you know what none of them said no they just got on with it but at the beginning, you get all these people that they want to sort of get in on your film, but they just want the IMDb credit, mm -hmm. which is sad, really, you know. And then, right. and then they start self sabotaging it. And like the guy that I was working with at the beginning deleted three days of the footage on a hard drive because he said, "I'm running out of hard drive space, so you're going to produce me a new hard drive in the next two days, which I didn't have the money to buy, um, or I'm going to start deleting footage." And I. I had to go out fishing and get the money, <laughs> the money and quickly bought the, and which we went around to his house and pleaded with him, please don't delete any more footage. I've got an editor. You don't need to delete it. And um, how I didn't kick the shit out of him, I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what the question I had. It's like. It, honestly. Yeah. So I've never said it on her, but an absolute grade A asshole to work with. And I, I hope I never <laughs> see him again. So it drove me mad. To delete footage, I think is sacrilege. When all those actors have turned oh, yeah. up, right, and, and they're working for nothing, See, right? people, I won't know. name the guy, but flipping hell, man, I was <laughs> fucking See, they wonder why pissed me know. right off. Pissed me right off. Wow. I mean, anyone who does that is it, that's criminal negligence, and you should you should get the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I agree. I agree. Why? Why do like, that? What? What a dick. What an absolute dick. Yeah, but it is a dick. Some people just like being a dick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to delete this footage. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's really good idea, isn't it? <laughs> Do you say it just like that? Like, you know I feel like this is therapy now. I've got that off my chest. I've sent it to the world. Cock. You, with a you, you, capital you C. Way composed than I am. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, all right, man, I guess I got to blow up your house. All right. It's like, hey, Rico, your mic is wicked low. Oh yeah, bro, I, the pettiness in Richard is what's up, bro. <laughs> right, anyway, now on a, on a peaceful note, I've done a lot of therapy, and I forgive, I forgive it in. Um, I forgive it. <laughs> um, so, um. Lipser, what is what is the <laughs> the long term goal with the movie? Are are you trying to get it into? Well, I like, tell you what, Ma America that. have been have been the only people that uh, in Bayview uh, Entertainment took our film on. 
because obviously the starting of the the war in Ukraine hasn't been the best for wanting people wanting to make war films around the Eastern Bloc. So right, it was uh, like we uh, couldn't have hit it at the more wrong time. Like, every film I bring out is always at the wrong time. It's like yeah, no one's going to be interested in watching something that's about the Eastern Bloc going breaking up the past. And I didn't want to kick the Bosnia War off again. So um, yeah, what happened was basically Bayview Entertainment in America went. We'll take your film, and I was like, um, looked at looked at some of the films, that, and one of my friends has got a film out with them. Um, Dave Reynolds, bless him, he passed away. They built, they brought a film out called Louisa, which is about it's an animation about uh, a lifeboat uh, rescue that happened hundreds of years ago in in England, and it's oh. a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. Um, in fact, I'll just have a look if it's in my cupboard. Here. I'll just get the DVD out. And uh, show you it so in case there's someone out there that wants to buy it because Dave passed away recently of cancer and he he, he oh, put oh. A bit of, it's called Louisa, it's on Amazon Prime. I should be plugging me okay. in, okay? Yeah, but it's a beautiful animation. It's it's you know, it's 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 not got a massive budget, it's not the best cover, but for a Christmas film, it's like a Christmas film as well, and it's got a beautiful score on it. Um if you've ever seen the snowman the british uh, raymond briggs the snowman if you've got if you've got children it's definitely worth watching it with some chi- like with your kids right at christmas called okay it's that, on sounds Prime. Better, that sounds better than uh that snowman movie with uh, michael keaton because that sucked <laughs> <laughs> My, my daughter wanted to watch that the other day he went from batman to snowman it was horrible it was horrible oh I got to give my friend. Uh, I got to give my friend uh, um, Dean Kevin a shout out. I've been working him on the with the, uh, doing the oysters at the moment. A Martin Lady, and uh, we've been uh, getting the oysters in for um, for Christmas time because we sell them to France. And France go mad for the oysters and the snails and all that lot. So we're we're doing that at the moment. We're getting up at six o'clock, going in, and wow, I got to go in the water tomorrow. I got to go up to go up to my up to my nipples <laughs> and pull bags of mussels out of the sea. I've just got my wetsuit out for it tomorrow, but this is the life. This is the Hollywood lifestyle. See that everyone sort of. <laughs> How hard it is it to catch snails? You just pick them off the off the. That's off what the I rock. thought. I was like, <laughs> just pick them off the rock. snails. How hard is it to hunt a snail? That just... <laughs> they are fast. They're fast. They just... <laughs> you should say, "I'm going to pick up snails." Hunting is a whole different thing. Foraging, foraging. <laughs> uh, so you Sorry. haven't you haven't seen Penitent yet? None of you have seen it. I thought you would have seen it. No, no. Um, I, I actually said this to Jeff earlier. I said I was flipping through, you know, Amazon Prime. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, here's Penitent. Here's Diary of a Disgraced Soldier. I said, I got to watch these before the show Wednesday. And then I clicked over and I went, oh shit, I got to finish watching this series I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, and, and all of a sudden it's fucking Wednesday, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to watch uh, what the a movie. dick move. Oh my god, god that's hey, Re- uh, hey Rico, your mic's wicked low. I can't hear you. Oh, I can hear him. Oh, my bad, my bad about that. Did you muted your what mic? I did, I was muting uh, my mic because I went to get my I'm cold. Oh, <laughs> so you com- we'll treat you right. But so for all com- our viewers, real quick, for all our viewers, if you do want to check out Penitent. Or just Diary of a Disgraced uh, Soldier, or anything that this amazing gentleman has done. It's in the show notes up above or down below, depending oh, on where you're watching you. or listening to us from. Usually Leo does that. And I forgot he wasn't here. So now back to the I've show. Got, I've got a book. I've got a book called Soldier of Consequence as well. So there's free products on Amazon Prime. Soldier of, Co- so- Soldier of Consequence, which is right. about what happened to me with getting arrested and being a world news story at one point with uh, filming that incident that well now see what's the shipping from the uk to the u.s because see i'd buy the book but i have to have it autographed (laughs) (laughs) so i can't buy it unless it's autographed because then that's a good point right there that's a good point right there ben i i have the same question actually what if i what if i just i'll post out some stickers to you i'll put some put some put some signatures on these stickers (laughs) 
You stick it on your book. That, <laughs> you could actually like do it. that. You could actually like could do that. I have Everybody seen that. The army like well, that. I'll tell you what I wanted to do. Once you've, once you've seen Peniton, I've got this was left over from when we were doing oh. our promotion. This, this, oh. uh, the artwork is amazing. This, um, it is amazing. This was done by a local artist in England. And, um, <laughs> yeah, what I want to do is try and get all this, get, get Steve to sign it. Steve Kelly. I want to see if Steve will come on your podcast because he does a, when you've watched the film, you'll see that he does an amazing job. Yeah. Steve Kelly, Julian Cigar, obviously you've met him. He's an animal in it. An absolute yeah. animal. Jason Gerders, uh, Dave Trout, and uh, Des Edwards, and all of the, I'll try and get signatures from um, Ali Harrison, get That'd them to cool. sign it, and then if we could send it over to yeah. you guys, nice. and then you could perhaps put it up as a, I don't know, I've put it up as a... I'm going to have to get Amazon Prime now. I have put, it. As, put it up Do as you? a dartboard? Okay. Is that what you said? <laughs> no. Dude, I'm no, glad you're to... not watching right now. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Jules, Jules, Jules is a unit. You've seen you, when you see the film, we see what he does to me in it. You'll be uh, <laughs> he, he done yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I gotta, I gotta ask. You were, you were a soldier for for a little while. What was, what was one of the things that you enjoyed the most out of being a soldier? I think the, the the best, the most proudest I was, was when I trained recruits. I went back to where I was trained and I got to train um, for um, for for 12 weeks recruits to become soldiers. So like taking them from civilians to, mm. you know, it was like proper, it was my my um, full metal jacket moment, you know, like I was listening <laughs> to that. So you tactically and, subdued a lot of people to the ground with the minimum amount of force necessary. Oh, no, to no. Understand? I, well, I said to them, I said, guys, you can either have Winchester's training and ATR Winchester. It was called where we trained. Um, I, I can't remember what ATR stands for now. I've lost my military, but ATR Winchester is where we trained them. And I said, you can either have ATR Winchester's recruit training or you can have my training for your final exercise and they said we, we're going to afghanistan we want your training so we put them through interrogation we, we completely threw the rule book out and um mm. we just yeah. we we took them we took them to another level you know we had to take them to war because these people if they don't they're gonna and and, and gratefully all of them come back alive and their friends are me now on facebook and there's a there's a picture i'll try and find it of me with my recruits and we've got this evil stare, like sending them to war. And we had this photograph taken, and yeah, it was it was um, it was a good moment, you know. That was one of my proudest moments. That's really that's really cool that you say that yeah. because like I I went to <laughs> you'll, you'll get a chuckle out of this. I went to I went to Iraq like straight out of basic training. Yeah, and like I didn't have that pre deployment training, and like I realize now, <clears throat> looking back after running missions with these guys and stuff, that it's so important. Because, like, if I can't trust you to take a hit or to, like, right. really, like, lose your shit when we need to, like, I can't trust you in a combat zone. So, like, that pre deployment right. training, man, is you bond a lot, too. Yeah, the Afghanis don't have that same rule book. I don't know if you nah. noticed that over there. The bad guys don't. Let's yeah. say the bad guys. Yeah, the yeah. bad guys. Yeah, the, the bad world. guys. The bad guys, bro. Just, you know? Right, right. No, that's that's really cool. That's 12 weeks, man. That's, that's awesome. So, I, I do have a question, though. So... You had mentioned earlier in the show that you had PTSD, and I know I saw somewhere that um, you're actually a trainer. Wow, we just lost Jeff again. He's having serious. Uh, he's serious, got pause. He's got. <laughs> he's got some serious uh, weather going on it in his area right now, so it keeps knocking out his internet. Oh, um, yeah. But you actually work with veterans suffering now. Is that correct? I have done, yeah, and I—I I mean, I, I would still say I'm recovering, With recovering through PT. I'm still going through the journey. I—I I, I thought at right. one point I'd completely mastered it, but during COVID and the mask wearing bullshit and all the the nonsense that went with, mm -hmm. with the COVID restrictions just wound me up, and I lost a lot of money in my businesses, and I was seriously angry at the government, and and it it it, it ignited stuff in me that I'd thought that I'd buried, and and mm -hmm. you know I still work through those my that my aggressive anger towards what I see as a dystopian cloud that came over, not just England, but the whole world, you know, mm -hmm. and as a soldier and my, my grandfather being a soldier as well, we, we fought as your, as your forefathers fought for in our country, we'd be speaking fucking German without you guys, you know, 
Right. Um, and we we fought for for people, civilians, to have the rights to freedom of speech. And I've seen my my son's generation have two or three years stripped away from them. You know, people call them snowflakes and that, but. Man, when I was 18, 19, I could go. I could go to France. I could go to Europe. I could go. I could travel anywhere I wanted. I wasn't restricted. Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah. Could, I could do anything. I could do anything I wanted. And now all of a sudden, my generation are saying to to the younger generation, "You can't have what we've had." And I'm mm. like, "Fuck you, man! This is what I fought for. This is yeah. I I fought for people to have freedom of choice. And what I'm seeing is more of the choices are being taken away. More of the freedoms are being taken away. And that fucking pisses me off." You know, right. that, yeah. that ignites my PTSD more than anything. Because we have, a, me- we have a, a friend that kind of described what you're saying with the best phrase that I've, I've ever heard. And he's like, I heard this from a movie. And he, he told me, he's like, people don't understand that a lot of us went to war for less than $50,000 a year. <laughs> Look at all the wild shit that we Fif- did. 15, one, five thousand yeah. dollars a year. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh. What the- a private, a private soldier is on is on about in England is on about it might have gone up now <laughs> it might be but, it but might wait, be but didn't you get hazardous pay you got hazardous pay no no mate no, no chance. what <laughs> uh, I think Rico froze no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, I thought he that's, un, that's right, unbelievable I thought I, I never. Thought I meant, I thought never I missed you. I was like, oh, my again. God. I will this- never bitch about my deployment again, bro. Oh, my God. But right, to tell right. you this, my friend says, you know, we went to war for, you know, $50,000, less than 50000 a year. <laughs> and we did some gangster shit. The fuck you think we're going to do for the people that we really love? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Good point. That's, yeah. that's what people don't 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 get about. Um, the sleeping. About- the, the sleeping the, yeah there's a sleeping giant and and i and yeah. i think it i think the more they withdraw freedoms the more they withdraw stuff away like we saw what happened in canada you know with like that fucking justin trudeau that cocksucker oh, yeah. you know what he done to his country yeah. and and that just that dickhead in 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 new zealand jacinda or whatever fucking name is the skinny fucking i know you're talking about ske- yeah. skeleton head you know what they what these people are doing is disgusting and us veterans are sitting back watching and going you're behaving no different than Saddam Hussein. In fact, Saddam Hussein wasn't that bad. I spoke to people in, in Iraq and they said he, he wasn't that bad. He left us alone. Like the people in the Maizan province, the tribes, I spoke to people. I said, what did you think yeah. of Saddam? He said, well, to be honest, he just left us alone. We just, you know, obviously roasted people alive and done some crazy ass shit. <clears throat> but we were in, I mean, uh, in we, Baghdad. We, we, yeah, let me just tell, can I just tell this story quickly? He, there, was a, yeah. there was a war memorial in, 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 in Basra it, they went back like to the first world war um and and saddam had it moved because they were going to build on this area he had it moved brick by brick so if he was that disrespecting of of he would have just demolished it wouldn't he so right. well yeah, had some, yeah had some moral, he had some morals i'm not saying saddam was a great guy but the thing is we're told so much fucking bullshit oh yeah so much bullshit yeah well, sorry, see, you, sorry, we... sorry, sorry, sorry i interrupted you sorry no, no, the U.S. actually put him in charge, believe it or not. <laughs> and the reason they put him in charge is yeah, because he could keep th- keep a lid on things. Not because he was a great guy. No. He kept order. That was it. He murdered people. Well, he did murder people. I didn't say he was a great guy. I said he kept order. <laughs> There's a difference. Okay? Yeah, well, we, we, we found we found. We found the mass graves of, of him he buried, you know, Q80 people on the, you know, buried them alive. You know, he done done some fucked up shit. But, oh yeah, you know, we've got we've got politicians in this country that 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 use medaz- uh, medazolam, which is an end of life drug, to kill off all the old people, the greatest generation that lived. They killed them off and didn't let them see their families from their. I don't know if it happened in, in the states in the same way, but mm. I know people that couldn't go and see their 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 relatives. You know. Mm-hmm. How dare they do that? How dare these scumbag they generation? They you should come to Missouri, Canada. Webster. Yeah, they do that in Canada, believe should, it or not. You should come to Missouri, Webster. I think I think you would I think you would like Missouri, Webster. What, what you got some it? people there you want them to beat up? No, yes. no, no, no. I'm retired. I'm retired. I'd probably get beat up. No, dude. No. Listen, dude, I'm telling you, if you're ever in the US, come to Missouri. 
you're, <coughs> you're not you're not gonna want to leave. I'll tell you that. I'll no, but uh, believe it or not, this is true. Up in Canada, they're actually offering vets end of life service. Oh, with terminal with terminal if they have like terminal no, just, diseases and stuff. No, post traumatic stress disorder, and they're like, "Oh, do you want to do you want to end it? All right, because we'll help. We'll Damn. help. Damn. It's it's a, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a doctor. It can be a nurse. <laughs> it saves them money on pensions. That's why. That's what they don't yeah. want to pay out for these people. I'm not. I don't doubt it. Damn, Webster with the with the. It's turning into a conspiracy show, Ben. This is turning into a... It was on the news. That's not, that's a, conspiracy. not a conspiracy show. It was on the yeah, news. That's, that's, why I, that's why I just lit a joint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sober for this, bro. I'm sober. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, man. Like hey, Craig, our viewers, like I said, Craig you Cox. never know where our show is going to go. We were here to talk about the other thing Webster. and Webster. I'll, take, I'll go deep down that rabbit hole. I'll go deep down that rabbit hole. We're going to be up there with oh, okay. Alex Jones, mate. This is going to be the... Oh, God. We're going to get a visit by the men in black. I've got the papers. I've got the documentation. <laughs> I, will, I will say this, though. It sounds to me like Martin is going to appear on the Rico podcast in sometime in the near future absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll, I'll be on it i'll be on it i love i love a conspiracy now and then just keeps you keeps Dude, you your, want the yeah, three of, you want him and just the two of us on a show oh it's you well yeah i mean you don't need me there to sit look pretty and smoke weed bro it would, <laughs> it would be wild it would be right? it would be wild it, <clears throat> just the three of us talking about veteran stuff it would yeah. get well that's pretty would, much what we've done tonight so that's sorry, true. Guys. That's yeah. true, sorry, guys. It was, it's it's, good. Ben, it's you, all you good. No, no, no. It's great. Questions. I love. Oh, no, love... sir, this is dope. <laughs> no, no, this is great. You know, um, this is awesome. Nah, that's why it's... people watch our show because you you just don't know where that show is going to end up going. Yeah, we Next do touch. You know, we do touch a little bit about what we say we're going to touch about, which would be your film career uh, as a producer, an actor, mm -hmm. um, the things that you've accomplished. But I'm just I'm just sitting here enjoying the conversation uh in in depth learning oh, more i'm, I'm, I'm glad well, since, since it's your show i'm glad you're enjoying the conversation it's uh, well fuck i mean you know <laughs> i think i got a couple questions in and jeff oh lost, yeah you did yeah. jeff lost power so i don't even know if he's coming back <laughs> Leo, Leo had to go eat dinner <laughs> Webster, I gotta, I gotta ask you, what's uh, what's next, man? Like, what's your next film? I know, I know that that's an idle ben, mind. Hey, that's Ben's question. No, hold that's on. Ben's question. I know, I know that an idle mind is a devil's playground because I know I'm a soldier through and through, man. So I know that if I, if I stay still, bro, I'll, I'll, I'll burn it's down a building. Good. It's not so, good. What next this is, this is my easel behind it because I'm an artist. I like paint. I do a lot of paintings and drawings and sketches first, and then that becomes my that becomes my vision board of what I'm trying to. And it's amazing when you're making a film how if I draw a picture, and literally next thing I know, I'm seeing the actors in front of me performing mm -hmm. exactly what I've come up with or doing a storyboard. I love that. That for me is like I don't know if you've heard of the secret, you know, the law of attraction and yeah. manifesting you know i've actually seen that happen with filmmaking it's just unbelievable like I've, I've had the vision in my head found the location i find the location first where i want to shoot it i start thinking about the actors i'm going to use i'm going to use jules am i going to use jim main am i going to use mm -hmm. like um steve uh kelly i think about the actors of what i know they can do um that they're, they're sort of and i try and i try and make i always i don't try and push the actors out of their comfort zone to be something that they're not i always want them to be an extension of herself. If you watch Penitent, I'm in Penitent. My missus said to me, "Well, that's just you. You just behave like all the time, losing your temper and flipping out all the." <laughs> so, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to be something I'm not, and I don't want an actor to do that. I want. I want to find. You know, if I'm going to cast somebody, I'll write the script around what the what the person can do. You know, um, like Jules is amazing to work with because he he's like me. He's got that dark that dark side, and you can really tap into that with Jules, and. The best thing about Penitent was was creating the villains. You know, when I watch, you know, when you watch Robocop and that scene where Peter Weller gets captured by the bad guys, Clarence Bodekin, yeah. and they shoot him up, and you you just you just hi Jeff, thanks for joining in. Um, you just feel scared for for Peter Weller, the character of was he? You know, uh, Murphy when he's about to get shot. I don't know if you when I watched that when I was a kid watching that in the eighties. I'm gonna be shitting myself when they blew his hand off, and 
So I wanted to create oh, yeah. a scene at the beginning of Penitent that sort of made you, you know, you're drawn into these soldiers and then all of a sudden this bad thing happens. And the villains are so scary that they become almost like demonic, demonic. Mm. Uh, and, and, and Jules just pulls that off massively. It's him, <laughs> him and Dez. And Dave, Dave Trout is an ex. He's an ex police officer. He was an ex um, arm response police officer. So like the way he's moving with his weapon, this guy's done it for real. I want people that have done this shit for real. I don't like using people who don't know what they're doing. So there's a couple of soldiers that are in penitent that I served with, like Liam Davies. I was in the army with him. He did 15 years. Did three tours of Iraq. Um, oh wow. Uh, the the, the one of the guys that's doing the intelligence brief, he sounds like a farmer with his with his accent, and he's a plumber. He's a plumber now, but he'd been to Bosnia, so everything he's describing in the film is 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 from. I said just just give an intelligence brief to do some officers, and I'll, and I'll, I'll film it, and that's all we did. He said, right, guys, tomorrow you're going in. This is this group's going to be out here. You're going to be doing this task alpha, task bravo, task Charlie, and we just did it all exactly how it would have been in the military. Um, so, nice. so I like that. I like that. When you right. watch the film, and also the gunfire, we used real gunfire. So we took the sound engineer, uh, the sound recordist, and uh, my friend is still in the army, and they were going to go down to shoot the shooting range in Cornwall. So I said, "Oh, we be able to get us in." So they they let us come in, and we we got in with the with the sound equipment and went into the butts. I don't know if you did that when you was in the army, gone down in the in the in the trenches, oh, yeah, and they yeah. fired, fired over yeah, your head. over you. With a 50 yeah. Cal. Yeah. With a 50 cal. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. So, yeah. But you didn't know sad. Alec Baldwin was in the movie. Who? <laughs> you didn't know who was in the movie? Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. You're talking about using live weapons. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. He'll be doing Not a lot. No part of him. I mean, he's kind of famous. Yeah. So. yeah. Alex, Alex <laughs> is probably, he's going to be doing a long sentence, isn't he? Bless him. <laughs> He loves live fire action. He does. He yeah, just... But that, didn't he get some? He got some stupid idiot woman who didn't have a clue about weapons to to teach him. She was yeah, doing all the firearms. I'm not saying under, that women can't do that. I'm just saying. No, it's still it it's a still woman under who, investigation. I believe there was like, a lot of things lot of that led up to that. that. Yeah. It wasn't just there's a one lot of thing. things that led up to it. That that's been, but it's still under investigation, unfortunately. But it's not looking good. No, it, like, no. It's just, it's, I mean, you know, so to that, find out about our amazing guest, <laughs> <laughs> look in the show notes that below. Down below. <laughs> oh. So Rico had asked what you had coming up in, in works. So I read somewhere that you're working on a couple of things. One called Grail. Yeah. And Was... another called We'll Meet Again. So tell us a little bit about maybe Grail. So, so Grail... When I was making Penitent, just at the end of Penitent, when I'd finished all the war scenes, I, I literally, I was exhausted. And um, uh, I was, I went, um, I was, I, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and this just story came to me. When we was growing up as children in, in Cornwall, have you heard of Cornwall in England? Mm-hmm. Yes. Cor- Cornwall. Um, it's, it's quite a sort of Celtic mystic part. It's a bit like, you know, Gaelic connected with mm-hmm. Ireland and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's these, these old folklore tales that, that Jesus came to Cornwall, visited Cornwall. And that and sounds completely nuts, right? But there was this tale that Jesus came to Cornwall and there's all these stone crosses in Cornwall, like these stone mon- monoliths. And it, you go around Cornwall, they're everywhere. Every churchyard has one of these and they're two, they're 2000 years old. And on it, is a is a Celtic cross on one side, and on the back is a is a little kid with his arms up like this, and a little tunic. And they reckon that that a child, that the child of the uh, the child version of Jesus, because he was being pursued by Herod, he mm-hmm. went off with Joseph of Arimathea, who was his uncle at the end of his execution. And Joseph of Arimathea was a tradesman and 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 traded all over the world, and was well travelled and would come up through Gaul, which was France, and come up through the coast and travel across to Cornwall to trade for tin because tin mines are really significant with Cornwall. There's still tin today. That's... So, the... <laughs> Hi, Jeff. So, so the legend was that, that, that Jesus would come to Cornwall to trade for tin. 
mm-hmm. and they would bring gold and spices and merchant stuff from from and i thought this is amazing how imagine if, what this would look like to see a, like an ancient vessel coming in out of the mist into cornwall Mm-hmm. Um, you can play the trailer while we're talking if you wanted it just show, show the the sort of um, the, the scene that we shot so I started to visualize what would that be if they met the pagan tribes of Cornwall and I started to visualize it and I started writing it at three o'clock in the morning and by the by the end of the morning I had the sort of outline of Jesus comes to Cornwall meets the descendant of Merlin which was <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be fun. I wasn't smoking nothing as well when I was when I did this, right? Just, <laughs> this was just if I smoke joints, I'd be even I think I because my brain is mad enough, I don't need to take drugs, right? If I took drugs, I don't know what I'd be I'd be I'd be locked up. It might calm you down. <laughs> no, I've done it, I've tried it. It didn't it just don't it, for me. I just want to murder more. <laughs> no man, I, I've my, my brain is crazy enough. I need to just fresh air is enough for me. So I, I am, back, yeah. back to the Jesus story anyway. So, so then, anyway, Jesus <laughs> he meets Merlin. Jesus meets meets a descendant of Merlin. Not saying that because it because there's different timelines yeah. there. Mm-hmm. King Arthur and all that lot. And then um there's this whole war going on within with these Celtic tribes. And he's basically it's not the story isn't about it's about these tribes meeting this this mystic man. Whether he's Jesus or not, that leaves for the for the viewer to decide. And that Jesus is just like he's just on job. What do they call it? Um, job training. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, okay, well, on the job training. Yeah, he's, yeah. No, he's just on the boat. He's gone with his with his with his uncle Joseph. He's getting some work experience around the world, you know. And he and and he's. But how did Christianity get into England for a start? Because it's bloody miles away, isn't it? The difference yeah, geographically. It's true. So, so I was wondering, perhaps this is, and there's a, have you heard of William Blake? The yes. work of William Blake. And he did the, mm-hmm. have you heard of the song Jerusalem? Mm-hmm. There's a song in England called Jerusalem. It, 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 it's very, yeah, the song Jerusalem says, and did those feet in ancient times walk upon green pastures, uh, pastures green or something like that. So that he was mentioning, he was a coded message. Did Jesus come to England? And those satanic men. Which is a reference to the tin mines, the Mount Cornwall, and mm-hmm. a lot of miners went to. Oh, yeah, no oh, there. I, I think he froze up. Oh, he froze yeah. up. Yeah. He's coming to us from across the pond, so that's true. Yeah, no, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sit- I'm sitting in the dark. Still the talking, you just can't hear. I anymore. see that. Or maybe he's actually. <laughs> Jeff actually lost Jeff, like you lose power and everything. Yeah, I lost power and everything. I'm on my phone. I got a lantern. CIA no, shut us I'm down. Oh, he's C- back. C- CIA shut us down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a three letter agency listening to this and, and wiretapping it. <coughs> Just, it's all jokes. Right. Well, I, joke. I was I was I was hacked by the News of the World for for six seven months. Uh, have you heard of the, the newspaper News of the World years ago? Yes, mm. absolutely. So uh, my my name came up on the same list as Hugh Grant's, Charlotte Church. Uh, I probably don't know who she is. Uh, Ryan Giggs, just a load of English sort of celebrities. I wasn't a celebrity. Wow. I was just a soldier. But because I was being spied on by a guy called Glenn Melcare, who was outside my house spying on me when i was training recruits at atl winchester funny enough wow. and my name my name came up in his diary so the metropolitan police connect contacted me in 2011 and said oh you're you're you've been hacked by the news of the world your phone would you like a payout oh, of course i would thank you very much so i had a letter <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course I would. the government I fucked me enough yeah, so they gave me some money to keep quiet about it, and I've just told him. Told him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, I well, know this, is hypothetical. <laughs> Webster, this is all hypothetical, bro. This is all hypothetical. We've all been drinking, you know. Hey, <laughs> hey, I know what it's like getting hacked by those three letter agencies because uh, they started playing Spanish commercials on HBO, mm-hmm. and I don't speak Spanish. So, <laughs> bro, no, it's true. He texted me, Webster. He texted me one day. He's like, these motherfuckers know that I hang out with a Puerto Rican because everything is like, oh, I call myself Espanol. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's a, it's like there. a regular Home Depot commercial, but it's in Spanish. I'm like, you guys are supposed to be outside the store, not in the, you know? What the hell? Oh, God. 
Holy oh. shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Is there a, uh, <laughs> I speak a little bit of Spanish. Just right, a little sir. bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> manana, 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 manana. You know, manana. Tomorrow, tomorrow. We did it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This got out of hand, Ben. This got out of hand. It's but HBO's fault. It. It's HBO. No, Jeff had nothing to do with I running this one off the it. tracks. No, no, the only three-letter <laughs> thing I know is GFY. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great saying. I love that one. <laughs> oh god dude oh, no, it's been, i mean it, it, this has been great i mean we've learned a lot i think <laughs> learned some spanish anyway uh, big uh, shout out to ben Rowe, <laughs> our, our producer it gets us ben just coming on the chat there ben Rowe. Ah, oh. there you go All right, i already well, like he's him he's got a great yeah he's got a great <laughs> we've got to we've got to get more people from britain watching your podcasts absolutely yeah, yeah we, we have, have i mean on, We've no, I will had, do. Yeah. I will share out as much as I can, guys. You know, you, you... I think you're the fifth, the fifth guest to join us from the UK. I mean, Jules, Jules joined us from the US, but he originally is from the UK. Yeah, well, he's coming back. Yeah, he's getting picked yeah, up. Yeah, he's, by Penn, he's, Penn he's Penn actually tomorrow. He's, he's in Boston right now. He's, he? he's about forty minutes from me right now. He's in Boston oh, at, the, okay. at the airport. Up in there, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's well, got a six-hour want... layover. He wanted me to pick him up from the yeah. airport, but we're doing oysters tomorrow and Friday are our busiest days. We're on doing the oysters. Ooh, so, yeah. You drinking? You having a few a few brews? They, they cut. Or... They cut your hands up big time. These things. Oh, really? They do? Really? How yeah. like the uh, the the oysters? The, the edges are razors. Absolute razors, bro. Stick you gotta go. Snails. You gotta go to Puerto Rico and have oysters in Puerto Rico. You can wear gloves. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you can get them for like. Well, it used to be like a quarter when I was growing up. You get a quarter and you get oysters. It's like seventy-five cents each. But dude, that smooth, my man, smooth. Never knew oysters could have sharp edge. You remember? You've lived yeah. in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they were fifty wild. cents. I thought it's like no, swallowing like... a freaking snot. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's good for you. Yeah, good for you, bro. It's good for I, you. I, I got invited out to America if you because uh, I did the work with the veterans and I made the film Diary of a Disgraced Soldier. Uh, there's a uh, father, uh, Phil Sawa, who's um, he's a, a Vietnam veteran who contacted me, watched my film, and he said, "Would I come out to the States in 2011? Uh, went out to um, went out to Florida, uh, and we uh, they did the international vet uh, conference of war veteran ministers. So they like Vietnam veterans." That, that suffered with post-traumatic ancestral became ministers. I mean, this is a film in itself, right? Wow, that is a um, film. I can get some of these guys on your on your podcast. They'd love to come on. Um, and I mean, Phil Salwa was amazing. And then he introduced me to Alan Cutter. Now, Alan Cutter wrote the book um, "The Altar of War." In fact, I think I've got a copy up here. I don't know if, it, but um, if he's he is an American treasure. Well, they both are. This. Yeah, this book here called The Altar of War. And you've you've the all seen Ap okay. you've seen you've seen Apocalypse now. Yeah. This yes. guy yes. this guy is the real deal. He worked on the Phoenix program. And um I've oh. got video I've got video footage of him talking about um his experiences. So he was wow. hired by the CIA because he could speak Vietnamese and they, they brought him out to um um Vietnam. Uh he's something like nineteen years of age. He he fell in love with this girl. Uh, this Vietnam local girl, she got shot and killed. He then went over the edge, started drinking scotch every day, working with a death squad, going in at night. I mean, you know, basically, That'd a lot a of people. Show. A lot oh, of yeah. people. Are you, are people. you talking yeah, about yeah, 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 the yeah. Phoenix operation from the Phoenix from, program? From yeah, the, Alan's, cool. still Alan's still alive. Alan's still alive. Yeah, Alan's still alive, and he talks. You know, he, I've got. Him, but I, so I went out to. I went out to America, and met like Alan's telling his story in this circle, and I'm thinking. Oh this is God. like the you real know this is ben this is the real Colonel Kurtz. This is the real Colonel yeah. Kurtz. Yeah. You know, do you, you guys know what this is, Ben and Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what yeah. it is. Read the, uh, read the Altar of War. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. I think it's it's, it's this so guy, for the people listening. It's basically um, it was a, a three letter agency operation that mm -hmm. was was done to pretty much pick up the Viet Cong, but it was like. Some real clan. They, they, some people say that that was like the beginning of like clandestine wet, what people call wet work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't read that, but I've read the, I've, I've read some of the unclassified stuff, mm -hmm. and I, I did not know that gentleman was alive. That's, 
That's that's some I real did. shit right if you, there. Oh, if yeah. you go onto the Chris Fall podcast, uh, my friend Chris Fall, uh, he does a podcast in the UK. It'd be good to hook <laughs> you. I'd like to get him on your show because you could pull a lot of, uh, do a lot of crossover with his podcast because he gets a lot of the English. Um, so I'll, mm-hmm. I'll link you up with Chris Fall. And Chris Fall interviewed, um, interviewed uh, Alan Carr. And I mean, he's a he's a, he's a minister now. You know, he's he's a r- real beautiful soul, real nice guy. But you wouldn't cross him like. And I said to him once, I said, um, <laughs> I said to Alan, I went, Alan, how how would you dispatch of people like when you was in the military? And he just he came behind me and he just goes, he just ran his thumb across my throat, and it was his yeah. thumb was cold. And <laughs> this guy's done this shit, you know. He he's he just went just like this, like you know. And I was like, whoa, you know, flipping out, man. This guy's and and he basically in the end, I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but the team that he trained this death squad they were going out and they were murdering people every night and he he thought how can i reduce the killing so he started giving them more scotch every night more alcohol lacing them with booze and um that was reducing the killings and then he was going on his r and r to uh somewhere and before he went on r and r he heard the death squad saying we need to get rid of alan we need to tie up the loose ends before the war ended so Alan basically got them really drunk one night and then just tossed a load of grenades in and blew them up, killed them. And uh, I know, man, it's you, the story. Look, look it up. <laughs> look it up. It's, it's, it's a film. It's a film that yeah, needs to be made. I wish film, there's, too oh, yeah. many, there's too many films I want to make. That's the trouble. And I, I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's not enough time yeah, in my life. Stories, like, that's a film. That's a film. Right. I, start, I started. I started so. too late. I wish I. Uh, but then again, I wouldn't have this experience to. If, nah, if dude, I, you didn't start late, man. No, someone's no, gonna. No. Someone's now. Nah, don't say that. Don't ever fucking say that, my man. You no, no, but late. you know, like in my lifetime, there's so many films that I want. Like you say, what's next? I tried to make a Napoleon film about uh, a year ago. We were supposed to start about two weeks ago shooting this Napoleon film, and we just mm-hmm. couldn't get funding for it. And uh, me and like one of the actors fell out, and. Uh, costume department didn't want to get involved i, I can play in napoleon the... i'm like five feet tall no i'm not i'm five seven <laughs> I'm yeah, bigger we'll than we got i've seen me bro <laughs> i watched some of your trailers for your fit yeah it's good I, 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 well, what's that thing you're squishing that head how did you squish that head on your trailer <laughs> what's that made out of <laughs> it was I uh i believe that real... was a cantaloupe wasn't it yeah <laughs> It was a cantaloupe that we that we had made up and put a, uh, a wig on and blood ran packs and yeah we I ran it over. It. I love it. You know it. Put a wig on it. Yeah, yeah. It had ben to be a head. It had it to be a head. It reminded me of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. Me, you, yeah. Yeah. A horror guy, Webster. You like horror stuff? I, I. I uh, I think there's too much of it coming out now, but I do like the old classic stuff. I love Evil Dead. I was going to put one. I agree. Yeah, Evil Dead. I, just think yes. I agree with you. There's too yeah. much. Like you're trying to do horror Halloween now. Yeah, I well, still yeah. struggle. No, no, I no. still struggle watching The Exorcist. I find the older ones more scary. I think because they're yes. almost like like if I watch Exorcist or like The Omen and oh the, the original Omen. one that yeah. is a, the original. That was that a ter- is- Have you seen uh, oh. The Orphan? Uh, the second part of it. I haven't watched a lot of modern ones. I just, they just Listen, don't too many, go, too much CGI. Go right now, dude, go right now, rent The Orphan, the first movie of The Orphan, and yeah, Ben knows, and then the second one. It's a really fucked up movie. Yeah, I haven't is seen it? the second one. I saw the first one. You yeah. haven't seen the, it's on Paramount. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Paramount that. Paramount for free. It's yeah. on Paramount for free. Dude, it's a, it's, it, it takes a lot for me to look at a horror movie and go, oh, yeah, that's, that's really fucked up. That movie had me going, I don't know who to hate. <laughs> wow, right? I don't know good. who to hate more. That's a good movie. If that, you yeah, did, for yeah. Richard to say, I don't know who the fuck to hate more. That's yeah, a movie you gotta check out, bro. Yes. So we, only got, we only got about four minutes left. Um, <laughs> four? Well, yeah, we could sit here all night, but oh, pr- um, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Bro, if we boost it, do, 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 do an extra oh, twenty yeah. minutes. Do an extra if twenty If we let minutes, it up, bro. Mr. Booze, it'd be all, it'd be over. It's over. We got to get my power back so I can get fucking dinner. <laughs> it's like I lost power. Bro, just – oh, it's cold over there. Never mind. I was going to say just go, go burn some stuff out back. Yeah. It's, it's a little cold outside. Oh, I got to burn barrel. That will warm me up. We had, uh, we had the film director, Tony Palmer, come to our showing the other night. Tony Palmer directed uh, – he directed 
uh, with Frank Zappa's 200 motels. Have you seen that? No. Yeah. Frank Zappa's, you, yeah. It's a bit crazy. Like, but, um, Zappa, you know, Frank Zappa is. I know Frank Zappa, oh, but I haven't seen okay. that movie. Yeah. yeah but, uh, when uh, I pee? Tony Tony Palmer also worked with um, Richard Burton. He worked with um, uh, mm. Peter Sellers. Um, oh, nice! Uh, and and he was involved with the music on the on the Shining with Kubrick. He was if oh, you nice. watched if you watched Kubrick. Um, I mean, I'm a massive Kubrick fan. Like, I mean, um, if you watch a Life in Pictures. Uh, Tony Palmer was asked to direct it, so Tony Palmer interviewed Spielberg. Everyone, you know, to have Tony Palmer, he's the one that quoted about the film. It's a very considerable piece of work, and, impo- and most importantly, an interesting test uh, twist on the Bosnia War. Tony Palmer wrote that, and um, he nice. um, he came to our film night the other night because we did a fundraiser for uh, veterans with PTSD, um, mm-hmm. and we had. Me, Tony Palmer, and Jim Main, who's in the film Fisherman's Friends, and he's also in Penitent, and that was it. Oh, and uh, Felix Black, who's going to be someone we're working with in the future. So, literally, we made twenty twenty pounds for veterans with PTSD, which is, but it just goes to showing in in England, people don't really give a shit about veterans. To be honest, it's it's very mm-hmm. sad, but that's it's, that's where we're at. It's everywhere, unfortunately. But, but we had Tony Palmer to ourselves and we, we had a chat with him and he was telling us stories about Kubrick and things like that. And just, you know, I mean, there's <coughs> untold documentaries done on. I said to him, I said, so why did Kubrick get? He goes, oh, he just consulted me on the music for The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, yeah. And do you know how I got to meet him? My dad fixes his swimming pool. My father fixes his swimming pool because he's got this house in Cornwall, beautiful oh, house. Wow. And my father fixes his swimming pool. He said, oh, my son makes films. And he went, oh, we'll get him to drop a film. <laughs> so my dad took it. I literally got his email address, fired the film off. It didn't have any music on it, and he loved it. So getting wow. Tony Palmer on board. And also, I need to shout out to Mark Ryan, bless him. Mark Ryan's been uh, Mark Ryan's the voice of Bumblebee from Transformers. We've yeah. got to get him on this podcast. Oh. I, I've spoken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, he's, he's definitely he's, get him. You know, up there with Jules and that, he's a real A-lister. You know, he's he's done um, a lot of stuff. And also, he knew Lewis Collins from The Professionals. I don't know if you've heard of Lewis Collins. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he ended up passing away in, in in America, but he was like a great British actor. Um, Mark's also um, friends with Jason Connery, who's Sean Connery's son. Mm-hmm. And oh, he's wow. very, very good pals with Ray Winston. Um, you've all heard of Ray Winston in The British mm-hmm. Actor. So yes, we got a little thumbs up from Ray about our film, saying I don't know if he's watched it yet, but like you guys, he's not seen it yet. <laughs> black <laughs> sales. Oh yeah, black sales. Yeah, yeah marks it. Marks in black sales. Have you seen that? No. The pirate. Is that the one with? Is that's the one with. Uh, uh, supposed to be Blackbeard, but he goes by a different name. <sighs> yeah, it might it? be. Yeah, might be. Might be that. I've not watched okay. it myself. It's on Amazon Prime. I need to. Everything's on Amazon Prime. No wonder I can't porn? watch. No, this isn't porn. Black <laughs> Sails. Jesus, Jesus. It's a pirate. No, that's, on that's that note. No. That's Black <laughs> Lace. That's so, so now, if it's your eyes. Black Sails, then it might be a porno, but it's Sails. Edward sails. Yeah. What's Edward Fatch, uh, ben? Oh, Ed, ben? Ben's coming in there, chipping in with stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, because I told yeah. him we only had like two minutes left, so he's like, "Oh no, no, no! I'm going to keep throwing shit in the chat." <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Talk about so, so people, so people that we need to line up for for podcast is we've got to get Mark Ryan on here. Mm-hmm. We've got to get Jules back on because he's funny and he's good good to have on the show. Steve Kelly, uh, who's once you've seen Penitent, then you'll have an understanding who Steve Kelly is. This guy here. Yes. Um. Uh. And. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if Tony Palmer would come on the show because he's quite elusive. I mean, I don't know how he turned up to our film the other night. It was weird. <laughs> we had nobody to watch our film but Tony Palmer, and I thought, hang on a minute, would I rather a huge crowd of people or Tony Palmer talking about Stanley Kubrick to ourselves? You know, it's like right, right. Do you know what I mean? It was it was a good <laughs> yeah. trade off. Have you got any yeah, questions, I Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Any last questions? Other than um, Rico and Eric. Well, I. Think, you know, I'm still- <laughs> Unfortunately, I kind of missed a lot of what the hell was going on. <laughs> it turned into a conspiracy show. Have you got any conspiracies that you would have? Oh, I'm you a conspiracy the lighting freak. Conspiracy show, okay, well, what's, what about Joe Biden at the moment? What do you guys think of that prick? 
<laughs> the same, obviously, the same thing you do. Uh, yeah, uh, basically. Oh my God. <laughs> Beat the shit out of that man. Like, I'd love to bang his and Boris Johnson's heads together. Or whatever. would they even know what the prime minister's called now? They change every week. Hey, they change every hey, week. I, right? He went toe to toe with corn pop. So I don't know if you want to tangle Hey, man. Him. He's Puerto Rican. Calm down. That's true. He's Puerto Rican. He'll catch you. He'll catch no, you. that's the problem. What the fuck are people thinking voting for him? Or I suppose it's, it's, it's those uh, voting. Bo- what have you sorted out those voting boxes yet? What are these computers? The, the, what they call the, the Dominion. Yeah. Oh God. Has, has anybody Dominion seen? The, has anybody seen the new Jeff Dunham special? No, not the new uh, one. No, no. Don't it's called it. Me the People. Watch it. That's all is I'm that, going to say about Joe Biden. Is that, watch it. Is that the there guy that go. just? Is that the guy that does the George Soros impressions? He was on with. He, um, he does a ventriloquist. It, he, yeah, he has yeah. Uh, as He's Walter, the uh, as Walter Ahmed, Ahmed. Ahmed. But, you know, let's, put, let's yeah. put it this way: Walter always starts the show, and Walter came out as Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I not even fucking kidding you. You have I to watch it. And it. And then I'm watching that tonight. <laughs> tonight, I'm doing that. Son. Yes. I oh, I damn near pissed my pants. I was laughing so hard. We gotta I go. Hope he, yeah. I hope he doesn't die soon because I want him to do the full term so everyone can see what a <laughs> dick he is and then die on the last week. So then Kamala can just have a week. Yes. Get at least a week. You get a week of Kamala. You've got to have a week of Kamala. Oh, see what, well, <laughs> you know, as long as long as they keep him away from stairs, I don't think he's gonna die. And bicycles. <laughs> And bicycles. and bicycles, yeah, bicycles, and kids, and kids, and kids, and kids, and kids. <laughs> and kids. Fucking pedo. In women's hair. Um, yeah. So, oh, anyway, God. on that note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> and that's how uh, I roll. <laughs> <laughs> Rico and Eric. <laughs> where, where do you like people following you? Oh man! First of all, thanks for having us. Yes, uh, it's been a lot. It's, of fun. it's always nice to come by, and we appreciate it, man. Um, you can follow us on Facebook on the Rico Podcast. You can follow us on TikTok, Rico yep. Podcast. We have a Patreon and, as well, and you can follow us on Patreon. You'll Patreon be shadow bands now. You'll be shadow. <laughs> You'll be shadow bands. You have like no, you're heart, radio. Heart, heart radio. Heart radio. Heart radio, baby. You're going to get one view a week, and you'll be like, hey, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we, I've said, I've ticked all the boxes tonight. This is getting shadow by this one. <laughs> <laughs> I can put this everywhere. <laughs> Martin, where do you like interacting with your fans the best on the socials? Where do I interact with my fans? I don't really on, have any. On I social think. media. <laughs> As I could tell the other night when on my film show, we had <laughs> really had the film director turn up. <laughs> I don't have any fans, mate. <coughs> mm. uh, Fanless. We're gonna, be, we're gonna we're gonna have a cult following. We're gonna have a cult following. That's what we're gonna have. All the conspiracy go. Amazon theorists. Prime. You can find him. He's there. So you can find him in the show notes up above or down below, folks. If you want to get in touch with this amazing gentleman. So, uh, Mister, I have no power. I'm in the dark. I, I apologize <laughs> to everybody. You That's know, usually I mean, every show. Well, yeah, I'm in the dark a lot, but I mean, this is the real deal now. It's like, what the fuck? Literally. Like, literally, you know? I don't like it because it's dark outside, too. Jeff, you look, like the, the gone. The flea. you look like the flea from Chili Peppers, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> you flea <laughs> star. You flea <laughs> star. <laughs> I don't know. He does. He looks like flea. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I mean, I've been told I look like Ray Liotta, but. Webster Films Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. We got Webster Films Twitter. Uh, we got. You can find us on there. Uh, so yeah, as far as us, just go to stilltoken.com. Well, if you go, if you go to YouTube, our Webster Films YouTube, we're trying to get some subscribers up there. Like, but uh, you can see the Grail trailer. You can see my ex, the Napoleon film that would have been made, but it's not going to be made. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the trailer for for Penitent, and what else is on there? Uh, yeah, all kinds it, of cool maybe. shit. Now that we've just literally got the trailers up there of the films I wanted to make and ones that I have made and the ones that I haven't made. <laughs> I'm very good at making trailers, but not, not the actual full film. Gra- Grail's going to be good, man. Grail's going to be biblical. We need a lot. We need a lot of money to make that. We've got to cash you guys as cameos in that. We're going to have to get you over to the from the states. Absolutely, one of Straight. our agent. One of our agents is from the UK. Yeah. So. 
because we are actually Blurry. represented by the same agency as Jules. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, so Spencer, Spencer oh. Wilding is one of our agents. Right. And oh, I, cool. I can play a guy in the dark. Yes. <laughs> Where can they find people. you, Jeff? Stilltoken.com. Just go to stilltoken.com or Token with the Dead on Facebook. Uh, all the links will be there and you can see all our shit that we're doing. Everything. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I like, like I like you know, like like Jeff said, uh, stilltoking.com, best place to find us. Um, just hang out when we close out the show, Martin. I know you want to go to bed because you got to get up early and it's like fucking almost midnight. No, no, there. no, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. I'm cool. Um, but to uh to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do so people like us can Absolutely. do what we do. We are out of here. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Nice.